on the rave. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. My name is Gav. And you are tuned in to the On The Rave podcast. This is the second of our fractal specials. You'll have to excuse us for going really fast through this. But uh, we're just working with some time constraints today, aren't yes, we, Ari? It's, it's stacked up. Pressure's against me. So we'll get straight in with Raver's Choice. Raver's Choice was won by Gary the Bear. Oh, it's an absolute classic. As it well. is. This oh, is... Listen, Listen carefully. carefully. <laughs>
and yeah, just a fucking storm on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm full of pingers already. Being professional. Oh yeah, we're being professional as tonight. And I'm speaking responsible, of, Gavin, I'm responsible. Yeah, and speaking of being professional, professionally, you can find us on the rave at uh -huh. on the rave on Twitter. You can uh -huh. find us on Facebook yeah. at on the rave, and you can find us on YouTube.com forward slash on the rave. We are powered by Podbean. And fueled by Basement Snacks. And don't forget that you can go and claim your 10% off ba oh, at Basement Snacks a by a simply going in store and screaming on, on the, the rave. rave. At Don's inside. You lucky bastards. So, Addy, we've got another one of those guests. Another guest. Another this, guest. This one I know. Yeah, this one you actually do I know. I do actually know. Yeah, um, it's me. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's me. Yeah. In Amazing. fact, the first time it was at Leeds. I, 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 I was going to ask you about this, yeah. It was at Weeksy's house above that uh, shop. And uh, that was your first ever deed, you said? Yeah, well, no, no not, not out. That outside of North Wales it was, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, outside of like North Wales and the Wirral. And then yeah yeah, I think it was what like nineteen or yeah, something. Yeah yeah yeah. But I was wondering if that was if you remembered the same yeah, time yeah. that we met each other. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, 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 Amazing. Maybe. So without even saying his name, we've got it all started here on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's Fractal Weekend, and we're down in Leeds in a yes. hotel, yeah. and across from us is Mr. Mike Techno. How Mike, you doing, how's Mike? It going? Yeah, not bad, man. Yeah. And shakes. Amazing. Microphones. Yeah, in front of microphones. Visual yeah. podcast. Yes, <laughs> Describing everything. You're so you're here with us. Mike, we've uh, we've both known you for a while. Um, uh, I met you uh, quite a bit after Addy met you, but uh, yeah, Ponies um, for mice, right? Yeah, 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 that's right. God, I, like my memory surprises me sometimes, but then it also Just lets me down. Fucking knows. <laughs> that's but like everyone's it, memory. That's, everyone's that's a memory. raver's memory. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I was gonna say it's a raver's memory. It is. It's like once you get talking about something, it's just like bang, 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 bang. <laughs> So, Mike, do you want to tell the On The Rave audience a little bit about you and what you do? Not really. But, um, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I make big fuck-off rave music. I guess it's music. I, I usually say it's, uh, it's... To most people, it sounds like a, a din of just sequence noises, but it's like a beautiful melee of sequence noises. Ah, uh, that's a good yeah. way to describe yeah, it. Man. Yeah, Yeah. That's what I do. Wow, <laughs> that's good. Um, uh, and obviously, we've had you come up and play in Newcastle. You played at the Damage Damage versus Rollies for my night. We had years and years ago with yeah, shit, Matt. Yeah. Um, what a fucking uh, shenanigan film night that was. Oh, it was. Man, yeah, yeah. I'm like again, I've got hazy memories, but really good memories. Yeah. Of that. yeah. My memory you came of that up to night. Me and put a hand over my mouth and then put an acid in the. Uh, I was gonna the, uh, say it was acid yeah. fueled. <laughs> Color fueled. Yeah, I was, I was dancing at the front just. I remember, I remember playing like the tail end of a Smith track on loop over a hardcore tune. And I was like, yeah, like, like it was the best. Like I was like it was some kind of genius. Yeah. But that's acid, I guess. Man. That's your it's Apex it. Twin moment. Yeah, yeah, like, that's, your, that's your sandpaper on the table. Yeah, yeah, man. Amazing. Uh, well, now that we've got that, oh, actually, what I was going to say is my memory uh, of you from that night is actually you might not remember this, but you may. Do you remember? Me and you putting bacon down the heaters of the house we were in. No, no. <laughs> it sounds about right. Yeah, we went into the fridge at the house that we went back to the house it was party. Chops. It was at Chop's house, oh. and we started hiding bits of bacon behind. And you know what? He found them. <laughs> he found them for weeks and months later. Oh, like, yeah, really? yeah, yeah. It was amazing. Blame it on Mike. Scapegoat Mike is one of my other aliases. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so I think uh, what we'll do is we'll just uh, crack straight on with the first question, which is about your early influences. Yeah, so, okay. uh, so, so, who first got you into music? Who was playing music in the house? No one really. Like my family is not they not musical in the slightest. I yeah, mean, my, yeah, my, my, I'm my the same. yeah, really, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like my my um, the only link musically in, in my family is my dad. Uh, no, my, my mom's dad, my my granddad. He's a he, well, he was a jazz session musician, a uh, drummer. Oh. Um, but like, it was never like music was still never really in the house. It's a my family history is a fucking weird history, but like, but yeah, but the pe like the person that got me into uh, into good music and like um, making me appreciate music was uh, so I grew up in North Wales in Colwyn Bay, um, and we used to go around to my, like my mate my mate Zeb's house for a mix in the summer. It, like he was the only person who had twelve hundreds, yeah, um, decent no, ones. No yeah, happy like... hardcore, like like there was no happy hardcore, but it's he, it was. It's, off, by it's, kind of, it's kind of off in the way that one of your friends has got two tables it, yeah, and yeah. like everyone just goes there. Either, the, either they're rich or, like in this case, their dad's a fucking Northern Soul legend DJ. So ah. he, just put, he, he just pushed, like pushed his, both his kids into 
well, not into a professional yeah, music, yeah. A, a profession, a professional but DJ. It's like being creative, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, and yeah, it's so, like, the, his dad's name as a DJ was, I think he's given a shout out, was DJ Chico. And um, apparently, he, well, he was, he was huge in North Wales for Northern Soul Nights yeah, yeah. and stuff. But yeah, this, like, we'd go around, like, in, like, Sebsy's tiny little bedroom could smell his little smelly feet like <laughs> seriously he had tiny feet and they fucking stank like especially in the summer and in, in fact um, Ninja Columbo 1 there's a track called Zebs's Fatal Feet of Fury <laughs> <laughs> a little dedication yeah yeah mate all, like, throughout all of my discography there's little dedications all throughout to, well people yeah people that I love man but um, but yeah so Chico and, like, and Zebs's dad yeah like big Open my like open my eyes to uh -huh. open my ears to to real music really yeah you know? and what sort of thing were you listening to so they were listening to happy hardcore like like mainly and um, but it, it I don't know it didn't really like that didn't really gel with me and like I don't know I've always been the kind of outsider kid so uh, like I like metal and hip hop yeah and, yeah. Like, it was like, hip hop for me as well. Like that's really? how that was how I got into the music. It was how old are you? I'm 30, 35. I know you said thirty six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, so. I'm thirty seven. I I wanted to say thirty six. Did you? No, <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I always jump ahead and add a year and say something like I'm I'm thirty five. Yeah, so we would have been brought up around about the so dragged exactly. up, dragged up around the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about right. So the, like all around that that era, the, what there was amazing hip hop, amazing metal, yeah. and rave was starting. Yes. Yeah. So like again. Like this is why we're all into this breakcore kind of, or whatever it is. Because kind of it's just it's a melee. It's smash, just, smash, everything smash everything together. together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, amazing. So of all the early hip hop stuff you were listening to, uh, what sort of thing were you listening to? I mean, when I was getting into that sort of thing, it was like you know you had the occasional bit of Tupac and stuff like that. See, I was always KRS-One, like one hundred percent. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 And um, I, I was going to say like Dre and Eric B and Rakim and um, all of those sort of bits and pieces that were playing. Yeah, man, especially Eric B and Rakim, and especially because they pop up. Well, this like because I know we're going to talk about my like the track that I've I've, uh, I've picked, but um, I can pick that track because it, it pops up in in hardcore and rave yeah, culture yeah, yeah. throughout. There's the VIPs of drum and bass tracks by TV and Calix or whatever with like with this track right over the top of the acapella. There's like, there's tracks on obviously on Death Chant which has got which have got paid in full throughout it. Yeah, yeah. Like it's yeah, it and it's really it, and it's bit like even the uh, like the kind of Indian vocals throughout it. They were all used in early rave as well, man. Like yeah. so, yeah, like um, yeah. Yeah, that, that, was, that was kind of what I was into, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So have you had to like pencil it down to that one, one tune? Track. No, like it, 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 all the tracks that I've, that, that um. That I've chosen, and, and I've done this because I've done this before, like uh, for Murder Channel, their blog, they they asked me for my top ten albums of all time. Oh, that's like, hard. It's, it's, yeah. well, you can't do it. So I put like I did. I put like a, a disclaimer. Order. Yeah, I put yeah, a yeah, disclaimer yeah. saying, okay, this is what's coming to my head now. No. Yeah. Boom. Okay. And then, but then I, 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 like there was a footnote saying. But none of it, it doesn't contain um, Bjork albums because I'd have to do a completely separate thing with Bjork, Bjork. albums. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, and, but the second I sent off that list, I was like, no, nope, yeah. I need to change that. But I was like, no, that's what it is at this moment. Hmm. So that's how I chose all these tracks. So these are, these are the moments. These are the, yeah, I was yeah. like, that's the one that comes to me straight away. So the first one, what's your moment now? Right now, like, so it's Eric B and Rakeem paid in full. Yes, Way, class. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, absolute classic. <laughs> so um, let's start off with some Eric B and Rakeem. This, <laughs> This is painful. This is a journey into sound. This is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value. All is ready. I throw this switch. Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. Pump that bass. Interrupt this broadcast for you a special news bulletin from our on the spot passport. Oh my gosh. 
inside my hand so i dig into my pocket all my money spent so i could deep up still coming up with lint so i start my mission leave my residence thinking how could i get some dead presidents i need money i used to be a stick up kid so i think of all the devious things i did I used to roll up, this is a hole up, ain't nothing funny, stop smiling, you still don't nothing move but the money, but now I learn to earn cause I'm righteous, I feel great, so maybe I might just search for a nine to five, if I strive, then maybe I'll stay alive, so I walk up the street, whistling this, feeling out of place, cause man do I miss, a pen and a paper, a stereo, a taper, me and Eric being a nice big plate of spit, which is my favorite dish, but without no money, it's still a wish. Cause I don't like to dream about getting paid So I dig into the books of the rhymes that I made So now to test to see if I got pulled Hit the studio, cause I'm paid in full That was Eric B and Rakim paid in yeah. full. It is an absolute classic, that one. It's the second time Eric B and Rakim's come up. Really, yeah. Um, he roasted it. Pegs. Um, no, yeah. he of course played, he did. He, yes, played, yeah. he played Juice, though. Um, <laughs> which is another beast of a tune. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll roll straight on. And Addy. It's a two and a one up. We did, we did have an up. But it was shit. Yeah, that so not as good. It's just was making siren noises. Yeah. It's good, man. So we're just yeah. making siren noises ourselves. We think it's better. Amazing. So for the finding of your feed category, Mike's decided to play his wild card. This is the card. first time we've had two on finding your feed. I think it is. Yes. Yeah. Um. Did Pegs not do two? Pegs did two because oh, he did Pegs. rave as well. I yes, think sir. it makes sense to be honest. Yeah. 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 He sort of had a hip hop tune and a rave tune. I think it was. I think so it was Eric B and Rakim yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Alternate. Was with his two. I mean, I mean, if so. I if I could have done two, I, I guess if everybody could have done the two, two yeah, would have. Yeah, yeah. Of well, that's it. Um, so you have gone for two tunes. Um, mm-hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about the first one? Okay, so the first one, yeah, is Pump Panel to the Sky. On like I think it was ninety four it came out. It was on Missile. Is, is yeah, that, yeah. I, I was going to see is that an old Missile record? Yeah. I remember the uh, the cover being blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. it is, man. Yeah, nice. Um, so like, if people don't know, Pump Panel, so like. F- like fun facts, like um, fun, fun facts. Fun, 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 fun facts. facts my <laughs> um, so the, the blade track, the acid blade track, like the it's it's down as New Order, but like the actual original track by New Order sounds nothing like that, obviously. Yeah. But it's the Pump Panel reconstruct re- re- reconstruction remix, and Pump Panel like Slovenian guys, like like um, just unreal, and I. Like I, when I was thinking about the, like these these selections, and this jumped straight into my brain, like um, like this is timeless. It truly is timeless. Like um, it as a lot of amazing techno is. Yeah. Like 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 old Speedy J is. It's timeless. You can play it now, and it sounds like it's from the future still. Yeah. yeah. And I think this is the same. Like it's crazy. I, I'm um, gonna see that uh, record again. Fucking good music doesn't get shit. Nah, it doesn't get a shit, man. Like, like, it, yeah, it's um, yeah, like it, it's and it's techno. So, like, I, I love techno. I love hardcore, and I do merge the two together. Yeah, yeah. And, 
and a lot of things come together in, in, in the things that I make, especially as the techno is obviously. Yeah. But like um yeah, I had to I had to have a, a specific techno track in, in this list at least once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like yeah, especially about finding my feet, like I was not torn but like like pulled in two different ways. Because it's it, very much how uh, Pegs put it as well, like because yeah, yeah. that was his two influence when he was like so young. That's he was, it. Like, he said he like he obviously had yeah, the hip hop yeah. side of him, but he had the rave side. Yeah, of him Yeah, and well. you can see that when you speak to him, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he he uses that stuff, man. Yeah, and I yeah. think I use techno and 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 the second one is manga core war dancer, ah, which is which is a which absolute is, fucking. It's because a hardcore track, but if you listen to it, it sounds like fucking breakcore. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it really does, man. Like it's on IST. It's it's on real. And those like, those early ISTs were so fucking super good, experimental. Man. Again, when I was listening, when I was trying to find, like, I was tr- thinking of these tracks, and I'd listen through and thinking, is this how I remembered it was? Yeah, it is. And I, I, like the edits. Yeah, it's unreal. So yeah, it's like it's not only a hardcore track, but it's like a breaky hardcore track and really experimental. So like, if anything. Like the, this, like double take that I'm saying is at least four or five different genres. Yeah, all together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is which is cool. I mean, like the more genres we were just saying there, like a DJ has to listen to Everything. a wide range of music to know what it is they like. If you go too far down a rabbit hole, you get too niche. Yeah, and you've got to pull yourself back out to to be more of the the, the scene. You know what I mean? Of course, I just appreciate a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. And open open to things. Like it's too easy. A lot of people find it too easy to. Well, a lot of people want to specify, and like, like, um, and I think people may be doing it for the wrong reasons. Or it might not be, but genre and subgenre Nazis. Yeah, yeah. What well, that's it. Yeah, yeah, just this is this, this is that, this is yeah. the trend. Let's say. Yeah. Like fuck, like fuck trends, man. Like these just merge everything together. Seriously. Amazing. So um, we've got two tracks. So I think what we might actually do is do a bit. Of, yeah, maybe we'll just play them back to back for yeah, everyone. Do that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Do yeah. That. Amazing. So we'll go for Pump Panel and then Manga Corpse one after another. Yeah.
better. Well, the more you sit down in front of a microphone and speak, the more comfortable you are That's in front of a microphone. That's why I kept telling myself about this. So, mm. yeah, man. And yeah. also, it's a great format you've got. It's a really great format. Yeah. Oh, well, now that we've been bigged up, bigs up. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, for everyone who was listening, that, that was Pump Panel into the, uh, to the Sky. Uh, and, uh, which is a 1994 release on and, Missile and Manga Corpse War Dancer, absolute fucking classic. 1995 oh, yeah. release oh, yeah. on Industrial Strength Records. So IST, by the way, yeah, yeah IST on Industrial Strength is like a sub thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's that dude, just like rough beats, bastard loud. Then you see, yeah, this, this is, is why this yeah. is why sitting with experts is great because he'll just like <laughs> put me straight. Just you know what it talk. is? Fucking discogs will tell us one thing, but a DJ will tell you another. <laughs> Amazing. So what we'll do is we'll we'll stroll straight on. And we'll keep going with the first rave memories. So, you've obviously been to many, many raves. Do you remember the first one? Yeah, man. Well, do you know what? I think I do. It's easy. It gets easy. Yeah, I doubt all my, all my memories these days, man. Like, like you, you said you're 35. I'm 37. Within, within these two years, you're going to just think... You're, like, Rave's changed. <laughs> no, you're going to think my brain's changed. Like, like these memories are not real. No, but, but um, yeah, my, my first rave memories, like, um, again, I think it's the first time I probably met Mad Emma. Like, oh, oh, no, you're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Dropping some absolute knowledge here, yeah. <coughs> like, um, big up M's, big up M's, yeah. Big up Mad Emma, one absolute legend. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, yeah, at Steam in, in real, like, because again, like I said before, I grew up in North Wales, in Colwyn Bay, and Colwyn Bay is the next town over from real, and not a lot of people know this now, but like, and Ad, but Addy knows this, like, yeah. like, but in 90, well, from 92 to, fuck, 2001 maybe, like, it was literally the hub for... Yeah. Like hardcore gathering media, other than Glasgow, or what, there was like little pockets all over the UK. Yeah. There was like Glasgow, Newcastle, Newcastle, yeah, yeah. There was Bristol, there was yeah, Bristol, South yeah, as well yeah. at some point, but like, what was it there? Uh, fucking St. Ives, Shire Horse, yeah, there yeah, was, yeah, 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 like, oh, and Stoke, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, um, in so, but the but real like North Wales is so out of the way. But the, it used to be a weekly rave. This is when I was in high school. It used to be weekly, and they'd get five hundred people there. Wow! Like it was insane. And so they'd have they'd have bloody fish tours. They'd have every yeah. nosebleed from yeah, Scotland yeah. Nosebleed. come down. Like, my, like by the way, nosebleed my favorite club ever. Is it? Yeah, Fuck yeah. So good. Be smart. Like, like they have GGM come down. Yeah, yeah. Like, we like, we did look, we did make there. Yeah. Like it was amazing. So like, I, I, my my first proper rave because around that time we'd put on under 18s parties in Colwyn Bay like a like a, in whatever whatever youth club would take us and like <laughs> at the time because there'd always be fights afterwards and yeah. There'd, yeah there'd always be all that that but like we would work our way around and stuff but like like um sneaking into well dressing up in a shirt <laughs> dressing up in a shirt when you're 14 15 <laughs> Getting, going into a gabba rave in real where where the uh, the the bouncers are a brother of one of one of the MCs, MC Easy's brother, yeah. yeah, Jason's brother used to be on the door. Like um like yeah, I remember us we'd we do that, we'd dress, we'd dress up and for some reason they'd let us fucking in. Like like I'm, I've no idea because I've looked at photos of me when I was fucking twenty five and I know I look fifty eight now. But when I was twenty five, <laughs> I looked twelve, it was crazy. <laughs> Like, but um, but yeah, my, like it was. I, I remember it was Dolphin producer, Adam Scorpio. I think maybe Brisk Loft Groover, Robbie Long. Um, I, yeah, I, Some maybe Mark G as well. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that was that was that. But like um, but around yeah, around that time, like Greg Dolphin was playing unreal sets as he always did. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, like that's when I like because he he ran Third Planet Records, which was also in real. Which again, it's just, North Wales was a strange pocket, like like um, and so yeah, he he ran that night. He he ran this record shop, and I remember going yeah going to going to the rave and and he was playing and um, he was playing the tune that I'm gonna yeah that I was suggesting yeah um, it's it's like a signature part of of, of, the, of the set he was playing yeah so who's the tune by it's by Talorian like on Mockham yes. like yeah it's called Vortex right yeah. Oh, I'm talking cool. a bit there, aren't I? No, <laughs> no, that's absolutely cool. great. But, it, but it, it's a it's a it's part a of his Steam like, yeah, two yeah. In his Steam two set, like um, which you get. I think it's an eight pack. If you can find it online, 
it's literally the best well that and his and dolphins hardcore hardcore heaven 96 sets are the two most um influential mixes in my life 100 percent but especially this one because it, yeah, it, this this is what made me believe in everything. Yeah, yeah Mocking was such a fucking big label. Powerhouse, then, oh. yeah, Powerhouse. Cool. So um, for his uh, first rave memory moment, we're gonna have Vortex by Tolerian. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and again, when you asked me about that track, well, for that that rave memory, yeah, the, it's such a big set. Like, um, I, but that's the one that stood out for some reason. And yeah. It's probably probably quite quite uh, the most subtle track in the whole set. But yeah, yeah, it was amazing. So, yeah. yeah, sweet. Um, right, well, we'll we'll shift straight on. Um, 
I know that we've spent time together at festivals. We spent a Glade oh, festival. Glade, running, yeah. We spent a Glade festival running around Messy and being colourful Glade together. Um, so what is it? That, um, do you, do you like a bit of festival action? I love festivals, but like, do you know what? This was a really hard question. Of, yeah. Like, um, because like it was like, what what gets you into festival mood? And I was like, I don't know. Like usually it's I'm gonna play this festival. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Okay. What can I do? What time am I on? Um, like, if it's in the daytime, I'll play differently. But if it's like at that Glade Festival, me and Greg closing that show, yeah. like, we were just, it was just, let's make absolute power. Like, and um, so, yeah, I, was, I really struggled with this. But then, the, and it, but the, the, the one thing that, come, if someone says, yeah, your favourite f- festival track, like, my, my favourite festival memories are either hanging out or they're playing. Yeah, like, yeah. So, Hanging out such a big part of it. Oh, like, yeah, 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 everything, really. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like this, yeah, the, the bonding and things. Like, again, like how long we've known each other. Yeah. History is like, like it's that, the friendship and talking outside is, is it's really important. And, and at least half of what this is, man. It's just fucking, just yeah. hanging out and bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah man. I like, think that's some of the joys of actually being at a festival. You don't have to go and see all the music. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It just happens you to be playing at the same time you're there with your mates. Yeah, a, co- a couple of the band faces was like, yeah. Who did see it, bad faces? Like, I saw five DJs over four days and one of them was me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. The rest were in my chalet yeah. just hanging out. <laughs> yeah, but they're some of the best times and they're some True. of the stories that you bring away as well. Yeah, man. So, like, so when you were saying about a festival thing, so I was thinking, what stereotypical thing can I think of a festival? I was like, no, the first thing that jumps to my head is this video. And had you seen it before? I yeah, seen yeah, I've seen it before. Yeah. It's the... well, have you watched it as well? Yeah, I watched the link. It's unreal. Had you seen it before, though? Nope, I had no, not. It's how, like... How amazing is that fucking video? It's just cool as shit. Like, yeah, um, the, the, the makes song me is, so happy, man. Yeah, um, it just sort of reminded you of all the good times you've had in the sun. Yeah, like, oh, that dude, you're like, yes, guy, you are just, tripping balls. Mm. Just persevere, and I'm just like, I'm just dancing, I'm yeah. just dancing. He's dancing. <laughs> yeah, you're dancing. Yeah, and, so, yeah. and, so, and obviously the people that are playing are actually in it as well. Like, like, and the track, the track is yeah. also awesome. Um, so yeah, like uh, yeah, so that, yeah, that's my that was my choice. But th- through a YouTube video, not through any of my own memories. More vi- yeah, yeah. viral. Yeah, yeah, completely. That's the thing about these sort of like these things. Viral is a, a word that sort of has a bit of a negative connotation in the world. Um, but this really, is very much a positive viral yeah, video. Yeah, like, like, you know? oh, one hundred percent. I was with my sister, my girlfriend last night, and I. Literally, like, my face was hurting that From hard. grinning at it. Yeah, I was like, this is, I, I was showing her, like, because I was saying about the tunes that I yeah, had yeah. chosen. And I was like, have you not seen it? She said, no. So I put it on, and I was just like, watch it, and then dancing on my bed. Like, I'm just, <laughs> even now my face is hurting talking about it. Mate, so, yeah. Well, what we'll do, um, we'll post a link yeah, in, the, in the comments, so everyone can get in and see that. It'll be the first comment, we'll peg it up. Um, so everyone can click in and see the video. Do you want to tell everyone what the song is yeah, that's it's, played? It's uh, Santa Gold, but the tune's called Unstoppable by Santa Gold. And if you if you search on YouTube for Santa Gold Unstoppable Festival 09, you'll find that video. And I, I guarantee it will brighten up your day. It definitely brings yeah. a smile yeah. on your face. It's amazing. Like. Amazing. So what we'll do is we'll play the tune, but if everyone wants to just stop the podcast and go and watch the video, yes, good idea. as long as you come back, come back and you have to come back. But, um, uh, That's yeah. the deal. So, this is Santa Gold Unstoppable.
that was Santa Gold Unstoppable, and uh, hopefully you clicked on the video and you saw the you saw just how much fun uh, just hope everyone's everyone's having. Everyone's smiling now. Yeah, just yeah, got yeah. a fucking good vibes on. <laughs> Amazing. So what we'll do is we'll roll straight into my favorite category, which is the shared discovery category. So Mike, what we do is we offer you the opportunity to talk about anything you've got coming up, and then maybe share a tune that you think everyone should be listening to. So obviously we're sat in a hotel in Leeds. Uh, you're going to be playing Fractal in a couple of hours. Yeah. Um, uh, what else have you got coming up? Right, so I've got so like not under the name the techno list, but I I write techno under. I know it's it's a complete head fuck. Everything about me is awkward. So like I write hardcore and drum and bass under the name the techno list, but I'll, but I write techno under the name Firehammer. It makes zero sense. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, like a lot of things don't make any sense. You do you. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. That's it, man. Like um, I remember, like sat in a sat in a in a like a smoking area, and I overheard someone go, "Oh yeah, you mean the technist that makes drum and bass?" I was like, "Oh yeah, but I do make techno, honestly." Like, but, uh, yeah, under Firehammer. Um, but I've got a Firehammer album coming out. I've kind of like I've I've taken a backseat with well for the last year or maybe two actually. I'm making core music. Apart from recently, I've, I've finished some projects which, which are going to come out at some point. But um, but yeah, I've got a techno album out soon on Love Love Records. Um, and yeah, like yeah, I've not got a great deal else happening other, yeah, other than that. But uh, again, we'll post a link in the comments so yeah, people can yeah, see where everything's yeah. coming. Yeah. Because like yeah, I run a label called Firehammer, like spelt normally, so Firehammer, like spelt normally. And it if you go on Bandcamp and look for that, all the money that that's that like the money goes directly to rethink mental mental yeah. illness. That's amazing. Like, like so like that is amazing. That like, is proper there's, amazing. There's, like yeah, there's quite a, yeah, there's quite a, like there's quite a few tracks there, and yeah, every penny goes goes to rethink mental illness. Um, and again, we'll we'll send links for all that. I think it, everyone oh, yeah, should that'd come. Be, that'd be a bit everyone mad. should fucking come. Put your hands in your pockets and just buy a couple of yeah, things. Yeah, honestly, like like, like yeah, it's. It, I think they're like a quid each or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, and actually, quite a few of them are free anyway, and it's donation. Yeah. But like, but like yeah, I've got a, like a like a full length Firehammer album coming out on, on Love Love. Um, yeah, just a little serious note. Like mental health is something that's not funny. Uh, people struggle with it every day, and if you've got it's a fucking couple of retarded, quid, it's fucking well funny. Uh, <laughs> so if you've got anything to donate and you want a couple of tunes yeah, in man. exchange, the link will be in the comments. Go and follow it and do it and do it. So. Um, We've asked you to share a discovery of yours. Is there is there a certain artist and song you want to share? Right. So yeah, there is. Like like Ninja Colombo, like my my well one of the hardcore record labels that that I run is it's it's always been about discovery. It like it like put out Scheme Boys first release. Yeah. It's yeah. Of, well, if you look at the the free MP3 label like Zombie Free, it's like put out so many first releases on there, and it's I, I think I I lo- I love trying to find. Well, not even, yeah, just, just pushing people that need to be pushed. Yeah. Like, and the, there's not one person that I thought needs to be pushed more than than my recommendation now for some reason. Well, that's the best way to have a recommendation. Isn't it? No. Yeah, like, like, but also, it needs to be fucking pushed to make more tunes. Yeah. That's <laughs> my fucking head. <laughs> like, seriously, he knows this. I tell him, I, since I've met him, all I'd say was, Finish more tunes. I'd leave him on a Friday or on a Sunday after a record and go, finish more tunes and that'd be my signing out thing. So do you know if he's got a Twitter handle? Shall we send well, shall we send not, the crew? On Twitter, not on Twitter, but on on, on um, Instagram. Yeah, it's Ben Algorithmic. Ben Algorithmic. Yeah, Everybody yeah. Right, get onto his finish more tunes. Get onto his hashtag, Instagram. Hashtag, hashtag finish, finish more tunes. Yes, yes, guys. Um, uh, get on there, get in there we'll and get, dive in. We'll get that on like yeah. So of all of the tunes he's done, is there one you'd recommend? Yeah, new net new st- Neck royalty. Ah, like, is this the one that was on Ninja Colombo 11? Maybe, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. You see, I've done my research. <laughs> um, so, um, the shared discovery from Mike Technoist is algorithmic, new snack royalty.
That was algorithmic. That was noose neck royalty, and I was right. It is on Ninja Columbo Eleven. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. two thousand and fifteen <laughs> release on the Ninja Columbo label. So, Addy, you know what time it is? I do. Set the fucking scene, bitch. Right. You just <laughs> you've come in the rave. You're just pushing your weight. Ah, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> push, 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 push. You just passed all the Jordy's front right speaker. Always hashtag front, front right speaker. Right speaker. Always find the Jordy's the front right speaker. You get the front, the DJ just drops the biggest tune ever 
or your hands in the air, or your fucking fist down screw face. <laughs> I'm 100% fist down screw face. Yes. yes. Like, 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 when you just, when you just explained, yeah, some most people are, are one or the other, or maybe a bit, a bit of both. Yeah. Like I'm, like, I'm like fist down screw face, but inside my hands will go go in the air, but I, I'll be crying at that. <laughs> like, it's I'm the not joy. even taking the piss, like. Like seriously, like if you watch me sometimes, like if I play a Bjork track, whenever you hear, like, <coughs> I love in my DJ Bjork. Set. Bjork's one of the ones that's on my list that I've never quite seen. There's something about hyper ballad that makes it one of the oh, most. Oh, dude! Like <laughs> on a mountain no, no, when like, it's throwing all the cutleries and just yeah, there's something about Bjork that's amazing. I've oh, never seen Bjork and I'd love to see really? Bjork. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude! But it's like I've remixed her a couple of the times that I, that I put out on Ninja. Yeah, and, the, and one of Ninja's. Like and and whenever I play her, because I, I play her quite a lot in in DJ sets. Yeah, yeah. I always well up. Like, always, I well up a lot anyway. There's like a if there's a key change in an advertisement, I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, Just take me. my money, Mercedes. I can't even fucking drive. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, but um, but yeah, like uh, um, but it's always it's not hands up. It's not a hands in the air moment. It's a a grimace with tears moment for me. Oh, yeah. so it's an emotional screw oh, face. Oh, pure, pure emotive screw yeah, face. That, do you know what it is? HMS would love that. Do you know what it is? Screw face. That, in peace. That yeah. is going into its own brand new category. <laughs> we've got a category of in the air, we've got screw faces, <laughs> we've, we've, got the, we've got the in-betweens, the emotional, emotional screw face. Yes! Like, you yeah. might see it later, to be honest. <laughs> That's the one. Uh, so if you see Mike after you've heard if the podcast... If you're a fractal tonight... I yeah. don't know this is going to go out he's after Frackle. Like, he's not gurning. Yeah. He's not gurning. He's emotional a screw face. Screw face yeah. Those tears aren't little balls of sweat, ladies and gentlemen. Oh God, no. They are genuine, salty genuine. Scott Tenement tears. They are. Like, <laughs> that's exactly what they are. Um, so, um, you're a screw face. What sort of thing screws that face up? Like, not not a lot better or more than... than the DJ producer that's outstanding. Yeah, we were just we were just talking about Luke and how clinical he is. He's ridiculous. Um, he is. There's some just deadly. He demands so much deadly. attention when he gets up there. Like, like so, I I've never said this on microphone before. Cause I'm, well, usually because I'm not on microphone a lot, but like I say it after parties all the time. I have a few things like things that always come out of my mouth when we talk about Luke, and it's like he's the walking embodiment of rave music. Exactly. He Definitely. fucking yeah. is. Like that's what that's what he like that. Yeah, that, he that, lives it. Yeah, he is. No, he is it. He it's is crazy, it. man. And no matter how many times you have like a conversation with, like me say, me and Sean believe, or we set off, we'll have the same. I've had the same conversations for again decades yeah, now yeah. about, and they're the same conversations, saying the same things, but they, they like they never lose their 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 gravitas and like and they're, they they're almost they're always so like. Like they, they don't get boring. They just don't get boring. You're and, right. And this track, especially, it's it's so weighty. It's like it's so chunky. And like, and yeah, it, yeah. And <laughs> uh, wasn't it recently remixed by? Is it Current Value? No, it's I, not. I outside know. agency. Outside yeah, agency. Like, but it, like, yeah, yeah. But, uh, outside yeah. Agency, yeah. Uh, that, that Which is also also great. Like it is a great track as well. But like yeah. this track is. It's unreal, and I think I'm not sure, but I think it's a prodigy break that he sampled for the main break in it. I'm not sure where the Look samples. Look at this hit well. Yeah, um, uh, according to my research, Last Man Standing was released in 2001 Social on Parasite. Social Parasite. Yeah. Um, so what we'll do uh, for the screw face in the room, the emotional screw face. Yeah, in the room. man. Hashtag screw face. Hashtag <laughs> hashtag weeping screw face. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, this is the DJ producer, Last Man, man Standing. Man.
away, that was the clinical Ooh. DJ producer of Last Man Standing, which was the screw face moment. Um, screw face man from the Luke Vibert tune. But which was sampled from uh, the Steven Seagal movie. Which Luke. is the which is also Hard to Kill. Yeah. Which is all for also the what was sampled for Dolphins. Um what was it now? It, no, no, it's what HMS's label was started from, Screwface. But also I'd I, I probably do a podcast on, on samples that came from that film, Six Million Ways to Die. Yeah, there was so many. So man. many. But like, yeah, HMS's um, actual label yeah. was called, it was named after Screwface because he looked like the villain yeah, Screwface yeah, yeah, yeah. in it. Yeah, man. Again, rest in peace. He's yeah. come out twice now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spot on. So what we'll do, we'll move on to one of the more controversial subjects. Uh, we're still waiting for someone to beat out Pegs as a choice. Um, Which because is horrific. Like, oh, it is absolutely horrific. Next level horrific. It is horrific. Oh, what, what was it? His choice was it's The Wolf. Um, a Spanish a, lad on a, on Dutch, a Dutch, Dutch track. A um, Dutch Euro pop track. Singing, singing about a Little Red Riding Hood. Good lad. Do you know what? I'm like, like, I love that Pegs keeps popping up in this, man. Yeah, he's, he's a, a good guy. Genie. Hopefully Pegs will have not stayed in with Gary and he's actually going to be at Fractal tonight. He could be. Uh, oh, he's supposed possibly. to be driving down, so hopefully he'll be there. Let's we'll uh, we'll post in the comments to let you know whether or not he was actually there. <laughs> and, and whether or not Gary's come with him. I'm, I'm doubting it at the minute. Right, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll straight into the guilty pleasures section. Mike, have you got any guilty pleasures in the world of music? No. Right, this is like so. This is my. Answer. Do you know what, mate? Fair fucking play. No, not one. So many people have said this exact same thing. That no, I, man. I really struggled to think of what was my actual guilty pleasures, and I, I ended up fuck. playing a song yeah. that I love. Like, like if, if, if you we, like it, you, you like, like it. it. Yeah, like, yeah. be proud of that, man. Yeah. Like, so I, I, so I thought, yeah, um, I thought of of something that people might just. It's the opposite of what they might link to what what I yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But I love this sort of music. Like, so it, like. Okay, so yeah, it's um, Hyam, like, which is spelled H-A-I-M, like Corey Hayam, like, but yeah, it's Hyam. But, um, um, I, again, I don't, like, it's not a guilty pleasure for me, like, like I'm proud of this, I'm proud of how this thing makes me feel, and, um, but I'm a huge fan of, of, like, cheesy, 80s sounding things, and, like, people like Hyam, and churches do it really yeah, well, yeah, yeah. and expect like this track especially. It sounds like, in my head, it sounds like um, like a moment in a in like a John Hughes movie. Oh, so like kind of like um, what, who am I thinking of? Uh, Kavinsky. Who's oh, the, the, the fellow that did uh, the some of the tracks off uh, the Drive soundtrack? Oh yeah, 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 yeah like yeah. that. Yeah, similar. Yeah, similar to that man. But like these are like the the real like the big crescendo cheese moments. Yeah, like, yeah. And I was, yeah, I kept thinking, okay, it, this is the most opposite of what people might think I like. Mm. But like, yeah, I'm all about those John Hughes moments where it's 16 Candles and John John Cusack is holding a stereo outside a window and people are hugging on the beach and blah blah. Like, so yeah, this is like this. I guess is a is a is a, a guilty pleasure, but it really is. It's like people yeah, yeah. fuck what anything else is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. You know what I mean. So, um, do you want to introduce your guilty pleasure tune for yeah, everyone? Yeah, okay. it's it's Hyam, um, spelled Haim, um, and the track's called Forever. And again, it, I love it. But this specific, the, the album's great. But this specific one because it literally sounds like like a the ending to a John Hughes movie. Amazing. Uh, from 2013, released on Polydor. Hyam, Forever. <laughs>
That was High M, that was Forever, and that was the Guilty Pleasure track picked by Mike Technoist. Now, we've got a little bit that. we've got a little bit out of order here, so what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way back to the question that should have come beforehand, which was the dedication track. Now, Mike, who would you like to dedicate a track to? Uh, my girlfriend, Becky. Right, she's a beast. <laughs> she's the best man. I've never heard someone openly describe their girlfriend as a beast oh, and yeah. smile she's like that She's my favourite animal. Like, she's my... <laughs> She is my favourite animal, like, you know, like, she's such a beast. Amazing. Such a beast. <laughs> cool. In, in, in the Wirral term of, not actually in every term, the beast, a beast, like, right. like she's amazing. Like, so in, in Birkenhead, they'll go, that guy's a fucking beast, mate. Like, or, they'll be like, no, that, like, that, that, that lady is a beast, as in, a monster. Yeah, in, yeah. in the best possible way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she, yeah, she's an absolute beast. She's okay. amazing. And what would you like to dedicate to Becky the Beast? Uh, it's Becky, <laughs> Becky the Beast. Oh, I've fallen off the bed. Oh, I've fallen oh, off the bed. I've fallen, Gavin. No hashtags. No hashtags. No hashtags, yeah. no. Um, um, so what would you like to play for uh, Rebecca? It's called Kraken, and it's by Three Trap Tigers. Um, and, yeah, Three Trap Tigers are unreal. My mate Ali showed me them not long ago. Um, yeah, and they have, they have, like, beauty of... Like a square pusher and show leader one, like in that kind of, like, kind of, uh, like a, like electronic band type way. That's, that's kind of math metally and powerful, but like there's, there's a, there's a drop in it where there's, because it, like the whole album, none of their music has vocals in, apart from when they just harmonize with the, with the music. Yeah. So there's a bit where we go, where it, it drops and it goes, oh, uh, like there's an R bit. And basically in my head, like, when, if I see a silhouette, like, I'm in awe of that silhouette, and it goes, oh, I'm in oh. oh <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Nice. Ah. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, man, like, that's, that's yeah, that's for Becky. I like that. I think that's beautiful. No, uh, sad. <laughs> the track here is being played out for Becky. This is Three Trap Tigers. Kraken. Kraken.
was for Becky the Beast. That's three <laughs> trap tigers cracking. That's a 2016 release on Century Me- uh, Century Media Recordings. Yeah. Now is the time on the Other Wave podcast where we are going to really, really quickly remind you where you can get us. You can catch us on Twitter at yep. On The Rave. Uh-huh. You can catch us uh-huh. on Facebook yep. at On The Rave. You can catch us uh-huh. on YouTube, youtube.com Ooh. forward Ooh. slash On The Rave. We are powered by Podbean. And we are fueled by Basement Snacks. Don't forget that you can go into Basement Snacks on Ridley Place in Newcastle and claim 10% off your order by simply screaming On, on The Rave. Run- That's amazing. At Don's behind the counter. Run down the stairs, shout it off here. On the rear, 10% off your snacks and your coffee. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not getting boring. Never getting bored. <laughs> we're going to shift straight on to the GOAT category. Um, uh, you said that a lot of these tracks were the tracks that you picked for the individual time, but you've just said that... Off the, off the cuff, yeah, yeah. Off the cuff, yeah, but you've just said that this one wouldn't change. Yeah, never, ever. I yeah. Mean, a few of them might not change, but like, yeah, this is all, all yeah, it's, it's <clears throat> a constant, uh, yeah, it's a constant in my life, like, and it will always be the same, like. Cool. Would you like to tell the on the rave audience? Yes, yeah, Dolphin. Is? Dolphin's the greatest of all time to me. Greg, Greg's a beast. Greg's, like Greg's, Greg's a beast. Are unreal. There's so many personal reasons why he's like he's been my family since I was a young teenager, and and like like literal family since I was a young teenager. But that, these are those are other stories. I mean, but I'm, I'm like I'm not just for. But I'm going to talk about the reasons that like the uh, the the Tolorian Vortex track. Right, like walking in to his first record shop. Well, no, so his, yeah, actually, yeah, because he had two. So, yeah, his, my, me first walking into his record shop, and, or me first walking into Steam, and seeing it, like, he's the most influential person, like, the most important person that I have ever met in my entire life, and, like, and for, for a million other reasons, but, like, the biggest one, possibly, which also is, like, an umbrella for all the other reasons, is because of music. Like, yeah, yeah. He is... He is incredible. Like, one of the reasons I started Ninja Colombo, like, wasn't for my own music to put my own stuff out. I wasn't confident enough to do that. And even when I did put it out, I wasn't that confident. It was because, like, he was a fucking lazy shit. Like, and, <laughs> like we were writing loads of tunes together. Like, we were, we were hanging out so much, so much together. We both moved to Manchester uh, around the same time. Honestly, coincidentally, I wasn't stalking him. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I was super young, man. Like, it was around the same time as yeah, I yeah. met you. I was like nineteen-ish, like. Um, but it was actually, it was honestly coincidentally, and we started collaborating properly because, like, we'd still been really good friends before then. And um, but yeah, we, we started collaborating, and then he just makes so many amazing tunes, and then just like, not send them to anybody. Yeah, like, just sit. Just, and a hard drive full of fucking it's crazy. absolute like, fire. Yeah, my first, well, our first Def Jam like was was a product of me taking, well, finishing my track and then taking his track off his computer and sending it to Cobby, uh, brackets Hellfish, like without Greg knowing, and then Greg sending me a message back. No, Cobby's messaging Greg because he only had <laughs> Greg's number, and then Greg coming to coming to wake me up because like so we used to we used to take shifts in in collaborating so like I'd write in the day he'd write at night and I'd fall asleep in his bed and then one morning he came in and woke me up and was like I just got a message of co- off Cobby and he said yeah I'll take that EP it's really good like and and that like, one track was mine one track was his and he had no idea that I said <laughs> it to him that track was disco shit like um yeah he like I all like I don't know. He 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 didn't push himself like 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 how he sh- how he should like and and do you know what now I th- he's fine finally getting, yeah he's on absolutely he on fire is, like he is taking over the world and it like my hair stands on end right yeah. now and justifiably so like yeah, the, 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 fucking right he's super talented fucking it's super unreal. talented unreal and he's so unique mm. like it like he does his own thing I mean we, there's loads there's loads of people that are. That, that are super talented and that but they'll fit in a pocket. He defines this his yeah. own thing, man, and that in itself inspired me to do my own thing. And yeah, but that these these this is if we had an hour, I could 
talk over an hour talking about how like, how Greg is that important. <laughs> that I need sounds to like a special thing. That sounds but like I'll leave it at that though because like, I know we've got like I need to go and play. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. So if anyone out there sh- wants to get into Dolphin, is there a track you'd recommend? Mate, go on the internet. <laughs> go on the I'll internet. Put Dolphin, Harcourt. No, no, that's a different porn yeah, site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, fucking, yeah, yeah. We've we'll, we'll <laughs> just varied off into Dolphin Rape Caves, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. fucking... Yeah, man. Oh, oh, like, but, like, go on YouTube. Oh, um, DJ Dolphin. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Dolphin, or oh, search for this track that I'm going to recommend. Yeah. Which is Dolphin Outlier. Like... It's not my Amazing. favorite of all time dolphin tracks because I couldn't come up with one, like. But it's one I really like at the minute, and I know there's some special remixes coming up at the yeah. like starting. Is like, this the this is the one that came out on Prospect earlier this year? Yeah, yeah, man. From this album, this, this yeah, mind blowing. The, the album is fucking destroyed. Unreal, it. like just if like just check out Dolphin, which by the way is his real last name. Mic drop, not me, but like the microphone. Wait, <laughs> there we go. So for everyone sitting out there, this is a prospect recordings release from 2018. This is Outlier by Dolphin.
That was Dolphin, that was Outlier, and as we've said twice already... Because he is an outlier, by the way. Way! As we said already, that's the 2018 release on Prospect Recordings. We've got down to the very last tune of the podcast. And what a podcast has been like this. It has, you know, it's it's possibly been uh, my favourite podcast. I'm the most fun, like, it's been fucking unreal, mate. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, seriously. When Mike first came through the door, he was really nervous at sitting down and talking, and now he's bringing us round full conversation. (laughs) Like, he was jumping. Peel and we are some sort of I'm amateur. I'm still jumpy, man. I'm yeah. always jumpy. I just make it work sometimes. <laughs> so we're down to the last track, and this is the moment where we ask you to pick a personal anthem. Now, the way we always put it is, is if you were a WWE superstar, what tune would you come down to the ring to? And it'd be 100 percent this. Like it's basically a tune that you know when you listen to tracks and you go, I wish I made that. Yes, like, yes, like, yes, it's, yes. It's not. It's not. I could have, or I should have. Because <coughs> you couldn't. Like, but. Like that is like personified what I am, and it's yeah, it's broken note, bad acid. Oh. And, like not because like, like I want people to have bad acid chips. No, if you listen to this tune, this tune, I think it's I think it's only like 155 beats per minute. But I personally, I think it's the most core tune that there is by like possibly the most talented and best like. Hard producer that there is. I think Broken Note is fucking unreal when he's on fire. Like, and yeah, there's there's so much power in this tune, especially like you said. If I was coming into a ring for a WWE like match or something, like this this is horrifying. <laughs> like, like, but not in like a, a crazy, fast, intense way. Like, it's scary in a what is happening to my muscles way people feel spasm <laughs> this tune is ridiculous you have to put this on like it like look it, and it's like listening to me your muscles will spasm if you listen to my voice too long and that's what will happen to you if you listen to this tune for the first time in the best possible way it's called Bad Acid by Broken Note amazing um, it's been an absolute fucking pleasure having you on. Thank you, you so much. Cheers, That's honestly. Yeah, thank you for asking me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final tune selected Peace. by Mike. This is Broken no. Note by Bad Acid. Acid. Yeah.
Well, Addy, we've done it again. We're through. Yeah. We're ready, ready for the rave. You know and what it get, is? Get, we're ready for the rave. The side tip choice of the week is the first, my first track of the night that I'm going to play. It's a switch technique, evil dance, and it's a fucking scientific stinker of a tune. <laughs> and before we wrap into that stinker, we'll just remind you, of course, that you can catch us on Twitter at On The Rave. You can catch us on Facebook at On The Rave. You can catch us on YouTube.com forward slash On The Rave. We are powered by Podbean. You'll buy Basement Snacks. Don't forget you can claim your 10% off at Basement Snacks by simply walking into the shop on Ridley Place in Newcastle United upon Time and screaming at Don's behind the bar oh, on man. the rave. You have to excuse the quietness. We're gearing down. This is Evil Dance, and now we are officially off the rave, but on the rave, but, but off, the rave. off the rave, but, but definitely, definitely on, the rave. on the rave. There are things in heaven and on earth beyond the comprehension of man. This is more than just a superstition. It is a living force.
There are things in heaven and on earth beyond the comprehension of man.